Okay, so what is up guys? Welcome back to another video. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the GVM P80S, ATW, whatever you want to call this. It's technically supposed to be an 80 watt single source COB light from GVM. And as far as I know right now, this is the cheapest light in this category. It's just slightly cheaper than the Godox SL60W, which is selling for around $140. While this one comes in at about $120. So $20 cheaper. Now, I've used the Godox SL60W extensively and I love that light and I recommend it to almost everybody. But is it worth actually skating on the extra $20 and getting something slightly cheaper? and pretty much saving some money. Well, in this video, we're going to find out and basically try to review the GVM 80 Watt on its own merits and see if it's actually worth buying for your money. The kind of guns. First things first, let's talk about the unboxing experience with this light. Now, it's packed down in a way that obviously shows you that this is a very, very budget offering and it was supposed to undercut something else. So you get a fairly large box, which is larger than it necessarily needs to be. And you have this light with the reflector attached to it inside of the box and you get a power cable and you get some gels some plastic led gels that you can use to change the color of the light pretty much and that's pretty much everything that you get in the box aside obviously some sort of paper manual thing and a warranty card and stuff like that so the unboxing experience for this light is pretty straightforward and it's nothing fancy and nothing spectacular nothing you've never seen before now moving away from the unboxing experience and actually talking about the build quality of the light itself this light is entirely plastic it's not the good kind of plastic it's not the kind of plastic that you get with the sl60w for example it's really cheap, really rapidly, really uncomfortable to use, and it just sounds like it's going to break at any given time of the day. It's not great plastic, and it's very, very plasticky. The only thing that's not plastic is probably just going to be this reflector, which is always rattling for some reason. I'm not sure why, but build quality-wise, the device just feels very, very subpar, very, very ill thought out. It doesn't really feel very great especially for the money when i consider the fact that i could pay 20 dollars extra and get the good access of 60w which was built excellent especially for a plastic build this is just not it now moving away from that let's actually talk about the buttons and the placements and other things with this build quality now the power brick port for this device is some sort of a i don't know what this type of jack is called but it's a small pinning jack that you basically put in now the problem with this jack is that it's very flimsy and constantly shakes so sometimes you might plug in your light and it doesn't come on so you have to come and fiddle with it a little bit for the light to actually come on and function the way that it was made to do now another thing that you should note about this build is that the actual light itself doesn't have on a off switch it basically has a dial which acts as the on or off switch and the control for the intensity of the light so you have to just switch that and turn it to get 100% brightness out of this light and then when you switch it all the way down you hear a click sound that basically tells you that it's off same click sound for when you turn it off another problem that i have with the build quality for this light is the power brick now it's a very short throw between the end of the power brick and the back of this device so if you have this raised up in fact now i don't have it completely raised it's at the height of my head and it's pretty much dangling off the floor that's not good and if you have this pretty much at the same height that I have my current video light right now shooting down at me, trying to use this to like record a video or something, this is going to be dangling off the floor at a ridiculous amount and it can be very annoying. Beyond annoying, it's actually pretty dangerous because anybody could pretty much eat this and that could cause some problems for you. Also, because of the quality of this jackpot pinning, this could actually damage it further and make it pretty much impossible to ever use your light again once this is damaged which absolutely sucks for me. I don't think that's good at all. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. Now, moving away from the actual build quality, let's talk about the quality of the light itself. This light claims to have a TLCI and CRI of over 97, which is actually pretty excellent for a light around this price point. I cannot fault that. And in my use case for a 60 watt COB light, even though it's supposed to be 80 watts, for a 60 watt COB light, it does a pretty decent job. When I compare it to the Godox SL60W directly, I would still pick the Godox SL60W because I feel like that one is just more color accurate and this one is just slightly dimmer. Or maybe it's just me, but it feels like the SL60W is just slightly brighter than this light. Now, speaking about the fan noise for this light, it does have some fan noise which kicks in 
after a while of using this light now it's a 60 watt light so obviously it doesn't kick in pretty much immediately but after you've had this light on for like five to 10 minutes no matter what the percentage you have it on is the fan pretty much kicks in and you can hear it audibly it gets to go in your audio and you know if you're not going to be great with like editing your audio and doing stuff to your audio to make it sound better people are going to be able to tell that there's some sort of um or static noise underneath your video now the real reason why i bought this light even though i don't like it very much is that at the time when i wanted to buy this light there was the emat 60 watt which was supposed to be around $90, which was the cheapest COB light at 60 watts for this price point. It was ridiculously cheap. So I wanted to review the cheapest COB light at 60 watts that you could buy as a replacement for the Godox SL60W, even though that one is already so cheap. And this was pretty much the only one available at that time. I believe I paid $119 before tax for this. So that brought it to around $130 pretty much after tax and shipping. And I thought that was a good bargain at the time. Looking back now, I don't feel the same way anymore because there are so many things that were concessions that you have to pretty much give up to get a light like this for just $20 less. I mean, with the Godox SL60W, you at least still get a remote control so you can control this light. With this one, the only way to turn on and turn off and control the intensity of this light is the knob on the back. But another problem with that knob now is it doesn't actually have any percentages. As far as I can see, it's just straight up plastic that doesn't give you any percentages. So you have to constantly guess what number or what percentage your lights are supposed to be on for certain different uses and certain setups pretty much so if i was shooting in the office with this light and i wanted to come shoot in this space since i can't find a way to actually remember the number that i was using to shoot in both spaces every single time i have to tune the light perfectly to get it done and that becomes a problem especially when you have to raise the light up and use it docked on your modifier or something it's very very inconvenient so it's just a few too many things that you have to give up, a few too many things that have to be concessions for you to be able to use this light properly, and I just don't think it's worth it. At $119, you can spend the extra 15 bucks, extra 20 bucks, get the Godox SL60W, and just have some peace of mind. Better quality light, slightly brighter, and it actually has a remote control, better build quality, and it's not going to let you down you're not going to get anything with stuff like this dangling off that could actually damage the pinning and it's not this kind of pinning in the first place it uses a proper three jack that actually secures your cable and keeps it safe and doesn't actually damage your light or your cable or whatever you're using to actually shoot your video so the gvm 80 p 80 s 80 w whatever you want to call it it's an actual decent light for somebody who is on a tight budget so i would say if you found this light on sale for example maybe it was going for 80 dollars or 90 dollars or you could find it used like new for around those prices it would be an excellent buy for anything higher than that this is an absolute no no in fact you can see the weight rattles as i'm actually just touching my light stand it's very irritating i'm not sure why they would build this and actually sell this to people but that's the situation with this light i personally wouldn't buy it again even though i already fell for it once it's not a great product avoid it by all means get the sl60w instead and that is my review of the gvm p80 s single source cob light skip this one thank you so much for watching and i guess i will see you on another video that was shot by kagan peace A kind of guns.